hello everyone in this video we are going to talk about risk factors as well as pathophysiology of PIH pregnancy induced hypertension this is a third video in our series the risk factors for PIH are previous history of PIH the patient is primi gravida obese patients maternal age either more than 40 or less than 20 twin pregnancy triplet quadruplets molar pregnancy these are the risk factors now I want you to very concentrate on this pathophysiology this will lead to all the uh, all the uh, things that happen in PIH and that management also so our fetus need blood supply good amount of blood supply from mother that increase with the time because the as well as the fetus is growing in size it needs more and more blood supply so the blood supply to the fetus should be very easily available and should increase with the age and what is the blood uh, source of blood supply or a source of all this uh, nutritions to the fetus it is the placenta so the placenta is the center part for pregnancy induced hypertension everything is get problematic in placenta and the treatment of PIH will also removing the placenta that means termination of the pregnancy now what happens in the placenta you need to see my video on placenta how the placenta is formed and what are the parts of placenta first to understand these things very easily but you can really consult it here if you even don't have to watch the video now see this is this part I have shown here is the myometrium of uterus this part I have seen here is endometrium so the blood supply of the uterus is the uterine artery and uterine artery get branches and the ter terminal branch of the arteriole it's a spiral arteriole that supplies the endometrium the spiral arterioles are very many in number and they actually this are the vessels who supply the endometrium and placenta and fetus so spiral arterioles are the very important vessels of the body now this spiral arterioles opens into this intervillous space because if this is a placenta then these are the fetal vessels and the fetal vessels will end into capillaries into villis these green things here are the villis in the villis the fetal vessels are uh, supplied now this villis are lined by trophoblastic cells trophoblastic cells include cytotrophoblast and syn cytotrophoblast this trophoblastic cells actually line the villus this trophoblast grow as the pregnancy advances and they actually what they do actually they just grow inside these spiral arterioles and make them wide like this here the green are the plastic cells and this is the spiral arterioles because they make this their lumen wide the spiral arterioles eventually become a low pressure low resistance and high volume vessels so that the blood supply to the fetus can be uh, very, uh, very easily achieved but in some cases this process which is called trophoblastic invasion is not achieved so what happens blood supply to the placenta and fetus will be decreased and there will be ischemia in the placenta and whenever there is ischemia the inflammation is triggered this inflammation will lead to endothelial damage endothelial damage literally means the endothelium of the capillary get injured and you know all that the capillary have only one layer of cells that is endothelium 
so if the endothelium is injured it become porous and blood and along with uh, plasma can go outside the blood vessel so our circulation system circulation system loses the volume of blood it's called capillary leaking because of this capillary leaking the fluid from the intravascular space goes to extravascular space and that will lead to edema which is very common in preeclampsia eclampsia gestational hypertension because of the fluid the plasma goes outside the capillaries and the circulatory system there will be hemoconcentration so because of hemoconcentration the platelet function cannot be very easily done so the platelets will uh, break up and uh, thrombocytopenia will be there because of decreased volume of the blood lesser and lesser amount of blood reaches to the end organs which are the end organs kidney brain lungs these are the end organs so if the if the blood volume is not reaching to kidney it will go for failure and oliguria will be there increase in the creatinine urea will be there if the blood supply of the brain is hampered then it can cause seizures which which go, uh, which is called eclampsia in the lung there can be a pulmonary edema which hampers the respiration properly if the occipital lobe specially is involved in the brain then the temporary blindness can happen so all these symptoms are due to this capillary damage now here the main problem is what placenta and what is the definite uh, definitive management removing of the placenta that's called termination of pregnancy so this was all about from pathophysiology of the pih in the fourth video we will discuss the management of the PIH. Thank you.